Very interesting stories over the last couple days about Michael Chan, a senior cabinet minister in the Liberal government of Kathleen Wynne. Michael Chan, of course, a Chinese Canadian born in China, now a successful uh, politician in Ontario. He has been investigated by CSIS, that's the Canadian Security Intelligence Service, looking into inappropriate influence on him by the People's Republic of China, the Chinese Communist Party. Now, to be clear, he's not being accused of treason, but just that he is unduly influenced by a foreign government, that he is actually working for China to promote China's interests in Canada, all the while professing to be a loyal Canadian working for Canada. Now, I want to say that I'm cautious about ever saying that a new immigrant here, especially uh, someone of an ethnic minority whose homeland is elsewhere, I'm cautious of ever saying such a person has a dual loyalty. I mean, I think you can be an outstanding patriotic Canadian, even if you just arrived from China an hour, well, maybe not an hour ago, but a month ago. And, and so I'm loath to, to accuse anyone of being disloyal to Canada without evidence. But the evidence that's come out in recent days in the media suggests that there are real things to be worried about that have nothing to do with Michael Chan's ethnicity or country of origin. If he was a white guy, it would be just as concerning. Let me give you some examples. Michael Chan, who gave a loving tribute to China on the anniversary of Tiananmen Square, calling China my homeland, he helped get the Chinese government's Confucius Institute hooked into Canadian schools. The Confucius Institute says it teaches Chinese language and history and culture, and that sounds great, but it has recently been banned from Canadian universities for being a political propaganda tool and for being bigoted against the Falun Gong sect. They are a spiritual minority in China that's been uh, demonized and, uh, of course, even arrested and tortured in some cases. So Michael Chan was a key coordinator to bring that Chinese propaganda into Canadian schools. I don't care if his name is Michael Chan or Michael O'Reilly. If you're doing that, it's, it's a question of whose team you're on. Michael Chan has had countless meetings with Chinese Consul General, the Chinese diplomatic squad here in Toronto. I would uh, put it to you, it's an open question of who he visits with more. Kathleen Wynne, his Ontario Premier, or the Chinese Diplomatic Corps. Now, until Canada chooses differently to have a boycott of China or trade sanctions on China, there's nothing wrong with having bilateral trade discussions. I mean, if we're going to boycott China, you may as well shut down all of Walmart and, and most uh, everything from your Apple computer to uh, much clothing. I'm not calling for that. I'm just saying when you are that close to China that you call it your homeland, that you give propaganda quotes to Xinhua newspaper, the state-run news outlet, when you're bringing propaganda into Canadian schools and when CSIS is investigating you, it's cause for alarm. I think this goes to a moral blindness on the part of the Liberals. There are many wonderful things about China, number one being its people. But there are many terrible things about China too, number one being its government and the, their totalitarian ideology. We wouldn't have the same concern about a French immigrant to Canada who was really close to the French embassy because France is a liberal democracy with whom we share core values. I mean, there might be some, some areas where we'd say, hey, are you looking out for France's interest in, say, Saint-Pierre and Miquelon or ours? But they would be very hard to find something that we would be uncomfortable with someone being really close to France or really close to Italy. But with China, when you're really close to the government, you're actually becoming really close to the oppressors there. This is a blind spot for the liberals, which used to be the party for uh, civil rights and human rights around the world. And it's reminiscent of the quote that Justin Trudeau gave when he was asked a year or two ago what his favorite country other than Canada was. He remember what Justin Trudeau himself said? There's a level of, of uh, admiration I actually have for China. Um, because their you know, basic dictatorship is allowing them uh, to actually turn their economy around on a dime. You'll notice that Trudeau didn't say his favorite thing about China was the people or the culture or the history or the language or the food or the architecture or the archaeology. He didn't say any of those things. He said it's basic 
dictatorship was what Justin Trudeau favored the most. And I'm afraid that's the problem with Michael Chan, that he loves that basic dictatorship and is close to them, and sometimes he loses his balance of whose side he's on. For the Rebel Dot Media, I'm Ezra Levant.